Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up your Windows computer to download the Blender source and compile it. This means that whenever you want, you can download the Blender source code and get the version that is the absolute newest right then. If this sounds like too much work, you can always go to builder.blender.org for the daily builds. The only thing is, if a new feature gets added in the middle of the day and you really want to try it out, you're going to have to compile it yourself. So let's get into it. While you can build Blender on a Linux machine or a Macintosh, this video we're going to specifically be talking about building Blender on Windows. We're going to be following the instructions found on the Blender wiki. I'll put a link in the description. The first thing you're going to want to do is install four different pieces of software that allow you to get and build the Blender source code. The first one is the Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition. If you follow the link here on the Blender wiki, it will take you to this page. Under this first section, click on the down arrow and choose Community 2019. This will download the installer. You'll run the installer just like any other type of Windows installer. One thing to note is that during the installer, you will be asked if you want to install certain parts of Visual Studio. As the note here says, be sure to choose Desktop Development with C++ Workload. This will install the parts of Visual Studio that allow you to build Blender. After you've installed Visual Studio and have made sure to install the Desktop Development with C++ Workload, the next thing you're going to want to install is Subversion for Windows. Simply choose the version that's applicable to your version of Windows, either 32 or 64-bit. You can tell by going to your Start menu, right-clicking, going to System, and under System Type it'll tell you 64-bit operating system or 32-bit operating system. More than likely, if your machine is new, it's a 64-bit operating system. So simply download the client. This downloads as a zip file, and inside of it is an MSI installer. The file downloaded will be a zip file. Simply right-click on it and say Extract All. And then in the extracted file, run the MSI installer. If you get a message like this one, simply click More Info, and then click Run Anyway. Just click Next through the installer. Use the typical install, and then click Install. The next thing to install is Git for Windows. Both Git and Subversion are ways for you to download source code from the internet. From the Git for Windows page, simply click Download. Once downloaded, just double click on the Git install. Click Next. On this component screen, you can just leave it with the default options. Click Next. You don't necessarily need to enable either of the new experimental features. One note here is that in the installer for Git for Windows, you need to choose the Add Git to Your Path option to ensure that Make Update can correctly function. My last time through the installer, this option didn't show up, so we want to double check to make sure that it is actually added, because this is really important. I'm going to go down to my Windows menu and type in Environment Variables. From this System Properties menu, I'll click environment variables. If we look down in the system variables, there's one named path. Let's double click on that one. We want to look down through this list and make sure that C colon program files git cmd is in the list. If it's not, I'll click new, browse, and then browse to this PC C colon program files git CMD, and then I'll click OK. This will add it to the list, and then I can click OK. Since it's already in my list, I'm going to delete it. So now I only have one copy of that in my path. What this does is make sure that when I'm in the command prompt, I can run programs that are in this directory, no matter what directory I'm in currently. It makes life a whole lot easier. Finally, we want to install CMake. Just like the Git installer, when the CMake installer asks to install into the path, we want to add for all users. So from the CMake page, I'll download the latest release. Make sure to go under the binary distributions, not the source distributions, and then choose the appropriate file for your computer. In this case, for me, it's the Windows X64 installer, since I'm running a 64-bit version of Windows. Once downloaded, run the CMake installer. 
Here's the screen where we want to add CMake to the system path for all users. Leave the install directory the same, and then click install. So these are the four components that are absolutely required to get Blender compiling on your system. There are other programs that we might want to install later if you want to start looking at doing Blender development yourself. However, in this video, we just want to get Blender building. So let's move on. The next thing we want to do is start a command prompt. You can do this in several ways. One is to click your start button and type CMD. Another is to press Windows R and type in CMD. And then press Enter. This will open a command prompt. If you've never used a command prompt before, don't worry, it's not as scary as it looks. Now generally speaking, this will land you in your user home folder. So now I'm on my C drive in folder users slash John. I want to get to my root folder, so I'm going to press CD backslash and then press enter. I want to create a folder where I'm going to put the Blender source code. The install guide assumes you're going to use a folder called Blender dash git. To create this, I'll type in MD for make directory space Blender dash git. Then I'm going to change into that folder. So I'll change directory with CD Blender dash git. Now my current working directory is Blender git. It's at this point that I want to download the Blender source code. I'm going to use git to get this data. The command we want to use is git clone git colon forward slash forward slash git dot blender dot org slash blender dot git. This means we're going to use the git program, run the clone command, give it this URL, and then we're going to use the blender.git file. And now I'll press enter. This will create a folder under my blender git folder called blender and will download the entire Blender source code into this folder. This will take some time. After the git clone is complete, the next thing you're going to want to do is type in CD Blender. This will take you to the newly created Blender folder. From here, you'll type in the command make update. The first time you run this command, it will take quite a while to download all of the external libraries Blender needs to compile. On future runs of Make Update, it will only download the updates to those libraries, as well as going back to the Blender Git repository for any changes that have been committed since the last time you updated. Give this command some time to complete, and when it's done, you'll be returned to your command prompt. Now that Make Update is completed, from the C colon backslash Blender dash Git slash Blender folder, we're going to run the command Make. This will do a default build for Blender. The first time you run this command, it will take quite a while to compile. Once the build process is complete and you return to the command prompt, open up Windows File Explorer. From your side panel, go down to your C drive, double click on Blender Get, and then double click on the folder named Build Windows X64 VC16 Release. In that folder, there'll be a bin folder, and under there is a release folder. This folder contains the Blender install that you just built. If you double-click on the blender.exe file in this folder, Blender should launch. And there we have it, a newly built Blender 3.0 alpha. And so then, the next time you want to build an updated version of Blender, simply come back to the blender-git slash blender directory, type in make update. This will download the newest copy of the source code and any updated libraries. Then type in make and a new copy will be built. So until next time, I hope you're finding the channel helpful. I hope it's inspiring you to make something awesome. If you haven't yet, go ahead and click the subscribe button now. So until next time, I'll catch you later.